So, okay, so I'll start from the beginning. So, so the race car song exists because, you know, Big D has a van and a trailer and we um, get our van and trailer service at an auto body shop called Bruce's uh, Bernhardt Auto. And it's our friend Bruce, he's just down the street over here. And one day I was at the garage and getting the van and <clears throat> dropping the van off. And I see these two amazing race cars. And I'm like, wow, is he working on these race cars? He goes, these are my race cars. And I'm like, oh, do you race cars? He goes, I'm the guy who, you know, Fick does the car. He doesn't drive it, but he's the guy, he's in charge of the race car. You know, like you have the guy who owns the cars and fixes them. And then you have a driver drive it. And, um, and then suddenly I notice all these trophies everywhere. I'm like, these are all your trophies? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, wow. I was like, well, you know, I play in a band. So if I write a song about a race car for the new record, can we, can we use your race car? And he's like, absolutely. So the, the only reason why that song exists is so we could play with a race car. <laughs> you know I mean? Like we just wanted to access his race car. And so uh, I came back with the record. I'm like, Bruce, the record's done. we got that song called race car. Can we do it? And he's like, yeah. And so then we got Wayne, um, Wayne uh, Hella, Hella Hill, um, Helliwell, uh, also known as the Punisher is the driver. He's actually at the rate. He, he drives it. And it's like, I'm like totally not allowed to drive it for like a million reasons. You know what I mean? Like it's not like a normal car at all. Um, you have about this much space and this is how much you move the wheel. Like that's how much you're supposed to move the wheel. And like, it, it's not even like a gear shift. It's like, it's crazy. And so like I'm in the race car, pantomiming, racing it. And uh, Wayne actually did the circles. But wouldn't that be cool if I was the one doing the donuts? Yes, yes. I, <laughs> the fact that it looks like, you know, camera tricks that looks like I'm doing it, I still feel cool. <laughs> I like that. That's, that's pretty funny too. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the driver is so cool. He was such a nice guy. He was such a nice guy to us. Like literally, it was like he was the rocker and we were we were just asking him a million questions and he was patient and answering. You know what I mean? Have you ever crashed? Have you ever done this? Have you ever done that? You know, and he's just, he, just, he answered. And he said, I did a good job because that's me behind going like this. And like, he goes, you did a good job. So I felt pr proud. So did he crash a lot? Oh, uh, yeah. He's, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> the teenagers from outer space and like the baby Ruth and the Zagnuts, a lot of things. Um, where did those like come from? Or like, what are they? So, good question. So, since the dawn of time in my life, um, going back as far as maybe like maybe like maybe eighth grade, but more probably freshman year, I've always liked sampling, like getting my television and a radio and getting sampling people talking and putting it into songs. It's been sprinkled on almost every Big D record, um, and it's just I call it sound art, and I just love it. I love it when other bands do it. Um, and I just find it really interesting. I mean, I just repurposing, getting some weird, you know, cause that guy who goes baby Ruth, Zag Nut, zero chicken dinner, that's his pace. We didn't, we didn't manipulate his groove. He had that. He's, he's the guy at a drive-in movie theater. Who's like, all right, well, don't forget next week, we're going to have, um, teenagers from outer space and, uh, you know, um, hell chicks on wheels, you know, different, different, like weird movies. Um, and he's like, and don't forget, we got great candy bars and pizza. We got Baby Ruth, Zagnut, Zero. But he he has a groove to it. And so I just played drums over him. And um, so what that is, is one of my favorite things to do is to put in old, like, these days I'm doing a lot of 60s, or those days I was doing a lot of 60s movies, the B movies that um, didn't really make it very well. They weren't very good movies, you know, comparatively. Um, so I would just watch these movies and just wait for someone to say something awesome and hilarious and then pause it, make a time code, get it off the screen and get it into like Pro Tools or Logic. And um, and I just love it. If you listen to the Cuidado record, there's a lot in there. <clears throat> Doing things like making sentences. I like making sentences out of a plethora of different people. Do you know what I mean? Like you, do, you just get one word from each person. Um, yeah. It's just fun. It's one of, it's one of my bigger like hobbies of enjoyment so so th so th that th those two particular samples that you're talking about are actually from the same um recording and, and that is a recording of the guy at the drive-in movie theater talking to the different cars 
And it's just crazy. It's just like an hour of this jolly, really good attitude guy just being like, all right, well, you know, and, he, and he's reading these movies and what they're about. And then, like the one you're talking about, he's like, with a giant lobster that's coming to take over mankind. And he's like, you can tell he's reading it for the first, he's like, well, that sounds interesting. You know, <laughs> it's just so funny. Yeah, love it. I don't know if this is really a question. It's more common. I like too how the like the noise complaint video kind of ties into the like shining on video. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Did you any like have any reason to do that? I don't know. I thought it was cool because it like it's that one and then it's like the next day and then it goes into yeah. yeah. Dan Joby, the director, he just he's on most of our uh, videos. Um, I don't know if it was him or myself who decided to do that, but we or we were just both on the same page. But we were both like, yeah, let's yeah. let's connect. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I like music videos, but yeah, those two are like that's cool that you do that. And then I was gonna say, uh, the was it the We Can Live Anywhere one? I like that one too. That one's cute. And um, yeah, that, that one's a little controversial though. Well, anyway, oh, okay. because because we didn't we didn't know this was possible. We didn't we didn't know that this would happen like at all. But, you know, we put out Strictly Rude and it's, you know, we had Noise Complaint and Shining On. And then it, then the next record, Flute and Stroll, we have suddenly the We Can Live Anywhere song, which, you know, is a little bit, it's a little bit less of an aggressive Big D song. It's, it's, a, it's a lot less of aggressive Big D song. And so when we shot that video and kind of showed the label and kind of showed the public, I think people were disappointed. They were just kind of like, what are you guys doing? I mean, th get this. Okay. So once I was at this bar and I'm with my friend and it's the model cafe in Alston. And this girl comes up to me. <clears throat> she goes, you know, Hey, are you Dave and Big D? I'm like, yeah. She goes, my friend over there. Uh, could you go talk to my friend over there? And she's too nervous to come over to you. And it's something, something to the effect of, and, she, and she's, she's upset. She's, she's not doing very well right now. Oh. And I'm like, uh, okay. So I go over there. And I'm like, Hey, and she's like, She's clearly upset. I mean, she's been drinking. So I think that had a lot to do with it. <laughs> and, and she's like, you know, it's just that like, I'm having trouble with something. And I'm like, what? And she's like, oh, I'm from something like North Carolina or something. She's from, not from Boston. And she's like, but I moved here because you talk about how awesome Boston is in Alston. And, and I wanted to, you know, go there and experience that. And so I've moved here, but you just put out a video called We Can Live Anywhere. <laughs> so what so what is it is do you think people should live in boston or just anywhere and she's like it's all been out of shape about this and I, I was just trying to explain to her i was like no i mean i love this area too that's why i'm here but you can live anywhere if you want to <laughs> you know what i mean so, but it didn't like like you know my my story about it my explanation didn't it didn't land with her and she she was just like okay and then her, her and her friend got up and it was the bar was closing so we happened to be leaving at the same time we went left and they went right and me and my friend took a moment to like watch them walk away and her friend's got her arm around her she's still upset about it and i'm just like ah oh, man you don't have to be upset about this <laughs> you know? it's just saying if you don't like where you're living you can move you know <laughs> that's actually really funny <laughs> it's it was it was you, you don't you don't know how things are landing with people. <laughs> yeah. I, took it, I took it as more as like it was like a love story. I didn't even really think about that, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I like funny stuff and then like cutesy like crap, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, what's your favorite like movie and uh, TV show? Oh, thank you. Um, my favorite movie is True Romance um, from Quentin Tarantino. <clears throat> wrote it, but he didn't direct it. Um, and it's just a perfect, awesome, awesome movie. And if... And if people haven't seen it, they should they should watch it. Um, my wife just recently went to California and got to see it in a movie theater, which I never was able to do. She was so lucky. And there was a, a raffle and she won the raffle and she got Alabama Whirly's the, the same sunglasses that Alabama Whirly wears. Awesome. In And if you want to go <clears throat> deep, I played in a band called Drexel, which uh, um, I played drums um, and it was Big D, the first record shot by Lemmy has Big D and Drexel on it. And uh, Drexel is named after the pimp in True Romance. And if you watch the movie, <clears throat> you'll see that the other guy in the room um, is named Big D. Oh, cool. 
there's a little scene in this movie where Drexel and Big D are in the same room having a conversation. And it's kind of neat. And, uh, but I do have to say, even though that's my favorite movie, the ones that I watch religiously to a point where it's probably not healthy is uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail and Indiana Jones movies. So I watch those like, I like fall asleep to them. They're kind of like my, if I can't fall asleep, I just put them on and then I fall asleep. <clears throat> um, but TV show. Um, you know, I really, I really enjoyed um, the Toast of London. One of my favorite. The Toast of London is a, it's a British show. I'm not trying to be cool. It's just they're just so funny. Um, the Toast of London, um, and, and now the same actor. What we do in the shadows. I mean that that vampire TV show is just so funny. Um, and um, I like comedies a lot. Um, so I think those are my favorite shows. It's such a good question that I'm trying to make sure. But you know, I bet, I bet, I bet when I was a kid, I liked the Transformers cartoon the most. Like meaning, I, kid Dave likes Transformers more than adult Dave likes the Toast of London. I bet you know. <laughs> I guess too for this question, I should have paid attention more. But um, in your book, you're talking about the the Volvo station wagon. So do you drive a Volvo? I, I did. I, 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 I like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've always had hand-me-down cars, like, oh, you know, used cars. Um, and so the state, the Volvo station wagon was a car I had for a while. And it's just so good. It's just so like strong. And, you know, like if you get into an accident, it's the other car that's going to get busted up. Your Volvo's going to be fine. <laughs> and it's good in the snow. And that's a big New England thing. Oh, really? That's good. Yeah. You wouldn't think it would be good in the snow, but it, it is. Yeah. Do you want to talk about do your art more? <laughs> I was gonna say I like I like the album and like you have all the little like extra things because I know you had in the video too like you had like I have it too the, um how it folds out into like a poster. Wait, what? You should have a the thing it folds out into like a little. Poster. Oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So like okay. Um, yeah, I wanted to I wanted to make it so there was when you bought the new record you're buying more than music. You got a stencil, a sticker, a poster. You know, I wanted it to like, you know, because I, I, I do our mail orders and I'm always putting extra things in because I know what it's like to get something and have a little extra thing in it and be excited. You know, like when I would order something, I'd be like, oh, I came with a sticker. You know what I mean? Like, so I know personally that it, it goes a long way. So I try to. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Yeah, I got the stencil thing too. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Yeah, you know what that that was from um a long time ago i put out shepherd fairy he's an artist i put out his cd and it's a collection of bands that like represented the artwork right so this was this was like 2002 oh. i forgot how long ago that was so this he did the same thing do you oh. know what i mean yeah. yeah and so that's where the inspiration came from that's it's cool. just random. It's just so random that I have it right here <laughs> in this drawer. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's called the Giant Rock and Roll Swindle, if anybody wants to check it out. The Shepherd Fairies, the Giant Rock and Roll Swindle. I like, too, that you, like, have the little extra things. Because I always enjoy that, too, which is, like, extra things. Everybody's trying to rob everybody these days. You might as well do the opposite, you know? <laughs> Oh, so, too. so like, why is it important to do your art? And I think too, like, it doesn't really have to be like literal art, but yeah. Well, I mean, <clears throat> this is going to come off a little negative, but it's supposed to be inspirational. <laughs> but it's like the way everything's going these days with society and capitalism. And I mean, it's just, or America, I should say, it's just, they're just taking everything from everyone. I mean, everything, you know what I mean? And, and it's also a New England thing where if you, if you're, if you're asked, what do you what do you do or where are you going to go to college? And you answer like, I'm going to go to art school or I'm in a band or I'm a painter. If you if you if your answer is anything to do with art, there's almost this parent like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I heard your daughter's going to art school. That's terrible. Like she's going to be poor. And there's a disappointment of of, of being an artist, right? And I, I would say California doesn't really have that 
swagger i think they'd be like oh you you are go tell me about it or like denver colorado i can see people being like oh that's good but but other than those two places most everywhere else is going to look at that as a negative right but then our whole character everything to do with our personalities and character um is art the music we listen to the clothes we like you know paintings we we buy <laughs> but i started seeing now with like technology getting bigger like i mean easier um, like Pro Tools, a lot more people can do music who might not know how to play instruments or like before Pro Tools and Logic. So I think most people who are getting famous or successful, I don't know why I'm doing quotes, but you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's more people who have rich parents and, and connected parents. It's almost like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory with Veruca Salt. He's like, Daddy, I want to be a rock star. You know, he's like, yes, Veruca, make, no, no problem. I'll make you a rock star. And so then I started like listening to a lot of my friends who are guitar players and artists starting to say they're giving up on their art. And they're like, I'm, I, yeah, I used to take photo. I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah, I'm not doing it anymore. And these are brilliant, brilliant artists, right? And it's because they think they're not good enough. That's what they would say. Like, well, I'm not good enough. Never, never could launch it. I just, you know, I just can't do it. I, you know, I got to be realistic and they'll go get a normal job. But that's what pains me. It, it's not that they're not good enough. They're definitely good enough. They're just not connected. They just don't have rich, connected families. You know what I mean? The rich people and the fortunate people, they're going to get it first. There's there's no question. If they want it, they're going to have it. And they're going to get it before you. But you can't hang up your superpower. You can't hang up the beautiful, creative thing inside of you because you think you're not good enough. You know what I mean? So it was really just me hearing a lot of my friends give up on art and wanting to somehow create a message to push that attitude back. You know what I mean? Like keep doing it. And like comic books, Superman was born into it. Batman was rich. You know what I mean? So they got to be superheroes, right? But what about Punisher? What about Rogue? What about the smaller characters? You know, um, what if they said, oh, well, Batman is Superman. They're they're big, they're successful, they don't need me. We need these characters, we love these characters. You know what I mean? Like, so you just, just don't give up. Just, just if you can, if you can do anything artistically, just keep, keep doing it is, is the attitude. They can't take it away from you. Yeah, you had, I like that too. You had the line, like, was it, no matter how difficult life becomes, never forget to do your art. It's the magic inside you. It's yeah, about. it's true, my wife, I didn't know this when we were going when we were going out. One day I went one day I went to on tour in China and I had a birthday and she took a picture of a painting she painted me. She painted me Uma Thurman um and Gogo from two different Quentin Tarantino movies, big, big paintings. I didn't even know she could do it. And it's so lifelike. It's so good. And and I can't even come close to doing that. Do you know what I mean? Like you could put me on an island for a hundred years. I would not be able to, to to illustrate paint like she does. And so I look at it as magic. I mean, it's it's magic. She could take a pencil and she does this for some people and like um, illustrate their baby, you know, in a pencil. Yeah. And it looks like a photograph, you know? And so it's just like, I just I just can't believe humans can do that. <laughs> I, just, I just can't believe it because I can't. Is that like what she does for like a living? No, she just does it. Oh. It's like a side thing she does just for oh. people. Yeah, and then I'm check this out. My grandfather was a toy make toy maker, oh, wow. but, but not for his life, just to give people and yeah. like see how you turn this and everybody moves and stuff. So oh, this was kind of I couldn't I couldn't. I mean, the pieces are so small, you know. Like cool. I just can't believe what some people can do, you know. Yeah. Um. Okay. Oh yeah. So this is kind of back. Um. I like them too much. Where you're like, I never signed up to play by any of their rules. And it's like I wallpapered my room with all their bad reviews. Yeah. Like, do you really get that many bad reviews, or is it just it's the same? No, no. It, um, well, it's Big D's had a really interesting um, run in this in this genre. Like, a lot of people go to music sometimes when um, they're. I guess you could just use the word like a reject, or like you know, there, there's it, like a reject in the scene, like in the high school or college, like. You know, like they go to music and see because they're not accepted. You're not accepted by the other people, right? But in this genre, um, Big D is still is still an orphan to the scene, I feel. You know, like 
we we're still not in the cool club. We still don't get asked to play the cool festivals. We don't get to play like we still feel like that kid in middle school as adults in in our position in the ska genre scene. And so, you know, like in the bands, promoters, managers, labels, listeners, fans, they'll, they'll always kind of say something like you should do this. You shouldn't do that. Why are you doing this? You should have done that. And it's like, yo, isn't this supposed to be the place where people can be themselves and just, you know, that's accepted enough. So yeah, I mean, a lot, of, I mean, I'll, I'll have bands. There's some bands in the scene that'll be like, yeah, you shouldn't have done this with this song. You should have done this, this, this. And it's like, what rule book are you doing? Do you know what I mean? And so um, never signed up to any. There's wallpaper in my room with all bad views. Yeah, like we've had a couple bad reviews. You know, with the audacity of some reviews are just ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like <clears throat> when Fluent and Stroll came out. You know, like people attacked us, and and now it's and now it's a lot of people's favorite record. You know what I mean? And of of the band. But at first it was like, oh, you messed up. And then you know, like we have this one joke record called Porch Life. And it's us, we just, our van broke one year, so we didn't have anything to do. So I took old Big D songs and put them on hip hop beats as a joke. Cause I kind of wanted to know how to make a hip hop record. Cause you know, like, you know, Dre records and Snoop records. Like I was like, there's a certain, there's a certain sound to them. And I wanted the death row sound. And I was like, I want to try and make this. So me and John Lammy, you know, shot by Lammy, we, we would put them together and the, it was really fun. I mean, everybody gets it, you know, you're, you're, you're with your friends and you're making a gangster rap record with ska lyrics it's hilarious but nobody got it and it got like one one star review on like i don't i don't know some i won't say the things but i'm scared of them um okay. yeah you know one of those like why are they doing this I, and you're just like oh my god oh my god you can't tell this is a joke you can't tell you gave us one star you know like so i don't think big big d's not in the music industry this, for the same reasons why 99% of bands are in the music industry. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, it. like nobody could come to our show and we're still playing music together and that's awesome. Do you know what I mean? So, so yeah. Um, oh, and too much. It's, it's too much. So yeah, the ska bands were always saying we're too punk and the punk bands were always saying we're too ska, but still we wipe the stage. We wipe the stage with them. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah, it's just being a reject forever. Yeah. I have porch <laughs> life. I have porch life. I never really thought it was like a real like thing. Right. I'm um, actually going I'm actually going to uh go through that record and just with copyright infringement problems, I'm gonna put it on Spotify and just okay. and just and just see what happens. Um so does it make you want to do anything differently or you not? Um does it make me does it does being like how like, people complaining about it? Do you want to do anything different, or you're just like whatever? Yeah, I, yeah. The, the, we never write songs for anyone. Like we only write songs for each other. Like, wow, cool song, Ben. Wow, cool song, Alex. Like, like we're doing it. We're trying to see what we're doing. Um, so we would never like alter uh, anything about ourselves to go to appease someone else i think that is so so yeah we wouldn't we would never change something i i'm kind of stumbling but did that did that answer the question yeah. <laughs> you're talking about the two. Oh, i like the one too though where it's like oh that was awful it stinks it's amateurs and it's like ta-da that's like my favorite like little extra oh, wait. Thing. oh that okay yeah 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 okay that took me a second yeah so <laughs> like men are lazy yeah, so that that first quote was um, is from this uh, oh Judge just for the hell of it I believe it's called it's an old movie called Just for the Hell of It it's pretty bad but um, it's like 1960s it's like they're trying to it's kind of like they're trying to do a movie like the monkeys like like that the band the monkeys or the Partridge Family right and it's about a band and they're terrible and that's the producer they they recorded a song and that's the producer clicking the mic going that's awful it's terrible amateurish you know so he's just yeah. he's coming down on the guys and the tada is me um because i was watching this like cartoon and and the cartoon would start with this 
like walrus or something and you'd be like like hey they're going and it was just so triumphant i forget what he was saying but it was something like tada it was something like hello and i just thought it was so funny that i i wanted to do the same thing so i was like tada so I, was just, I was just being the walrus okay that's one of my favorite like one yeah it's pretty funny <laughs> Oh, that was awful. It stinks. It's amateur. <laughs> Ta-da!